Okay, so I'd like to call to the RTM Senior Disabled Tax Relief Committee Special Committee to order at 7.14. And we'll start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll take a roll call. Here. Steve Karam is here. Um, Jill Begar is here. Mark McDermott and Hannah Gann. And I don't see any guests. I mean, I'm trying to get in here, but. And I was only expecting Ross, but he did send me an email. So maybe that was his meeting, being at the meeting. So first we're going to um, approve the minutes of the February 15th meeting. I've already made a correction of two typos. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't seen them yet, so I'm going to... Mark and what I got. I'm going to look at them. It, it, it just is a lot here. It was a very long meeting. <laughs> and at the end, I just kind of truncated quite a bit. <laughs> okay. Do you want to read them or something? Because I can't even get them. Do you want me to read it? It's, sure. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, the you know, we just did the regular stuff. And then the first thing that was substantive was the potential formation of the joint board of finance our team committee. Uh, so I have an end there, and I need to take that. Hang on. I'm going to with a sentence. <laughs> uh, Representative Perum. Just the highlights is good. Okay. I watched some of it again back. All there. right. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, you know, you you saying is it going to be five four five members? Uh, Jill. We talked about Craig. Talking about they Craig, hadn't met in July, and then you know, and then Jill. Someone brought. I think it's Jill brought up the um. You know the fact that there it is in the town code about meeting the January yeah, after so election. Yeah, I copied that into here. You know, and then you know just what you know both. But both Jill and Mark said that you know the intention was that this be you know we we the task committee reformed uh, refreshed right um, after each you know biennial election every new RTM that they has to look at the code um, and then just that you Cindy said that you would contact the subcommittee yeah I haven't heard back okay. So, and then, um, and then the whole, it's, I guess under the agenda, it said the current tax relief application process, but it kind of turned into a, just a conversation of how to publicize um, the programs because there had only been 39 applications that had come in and only three were new. And then uh, Julie DeMarco mm -hmm. was there. And so she was just discussing what she had done to put out the word, and then there were a lot of different ideas about putting out the word. She said she was going to put it in her February, March, April, May newsletter, but that yeah. I didn't see it in February when we were leaving here that day. I didn't see it posted. I didn't either. We, I think we picked it up, right? Yeah, I out. looked at it, and it's talk full, but I didn't say anything about it. Um, and then it, the whole thing about, you know, you brought up the mailing and how great the mailing was, but... It was like $1,000 from the two offices, and she doesn't have any budget for mailing anymore. So, you know, the, the right. lines on email, or, or, and, then, and then, you know, other ideas people had. And then um, the Veterans and the Disability Commission came up. And I think somebody said they were going to go to the, um, well, there were two things. Like one, I think you kept, volunteering too much, and then you were going to go to the breakfast. And it wasn't, it was the day I was out of town, and I don't think anyone could make it. It was like March 14th. But yeah, okay. And then, um, and then there was also the possibility of the disability commission meeting of someone going to that. Right, and Jill had asked if we could be on their agenda and they could come to our meeting. Right. But yeah, then yeah. she said they weren't going to have a meeting again until May. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, you know, what I got was that she she said March eighth there was supposed to be a meeting. 
Tuesday, March 8th. She said there was supposed to be a meeting. I don't know what happened. And none of us could go. Oh, that was on the 14th of March. So it must have oh, gotten okay. changed because oh, okay. of like a... Uh, okay. no, well, she or... said 8th. I'm supposed to go on the 14th. You're right. She did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then it was the 14th, and then we couldn't make it. So now there's not another one until okay. May, and I don't have a date okay. yet. All right. And then there's just, you know, the veteran stuff, and that the veterans are now at, you know, the senior center. And then old business, and this um, was, was you know, so that all took a whole lot of words to say a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> all good. It's all good. But all good. <laughs> and then old business, um, was just this great idea about this questionnaire that, um, you know, to formalize the findings from the phone research that you did, Cindy, um, and that you suggested that we split it up and that we, like, come up with a formal questionnaire and then each of us take four pounds. pounds and then, uh, you know, because it's easier to try to contact one person to try to contact four than every, you know, yeah. to delegate it to one person because it's just so, it's so many different phone calls to try to catch one buddy, right? And that was it, right? And that was the only old business thing. And then new business was two things. One was to just work on the ordinance and, and change some of the wording that needs to be updated or, you know, like, like maybe putting in that refresher thing or, you know, some other things. And then um, the the appeals process, you brought up that there's no appeals process and that right now the town assessor is all there. We could have talked to the Board of Assessment Appeals about that. Yeah, that was, <laughs> Some yeah. towns do it through I mean, them. And that was it. That's all I put in. You know, I, I confess I did not watch the very end of the meeting, but that's Nor all did I did. I note from the meeting itself, and I let it go. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. No, okay. So everyone, unless you vote, you vote yay, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> Hang on. Um, all right, so I think um, we'll have the minutes come like maybe within a week of our meeting, just so, because right. honestly, I totally it's forgot so about, the, no, it's a, it's a tough month for a lot of us, I'm sure. So the hardest thing is um, that I didn't really, we didn't, we didn't get into how we were going to like do the questionnaire, but that's fine. Yeah. Because we weren't going to call anyone within this last, before the last, next meeting anyway. Yeah. So uh, what I guess we'll do then is um, let me get to the next item, uh, update on the current tax relief application season. Mm -hmm. um, is so, Rob supposed to be here for this? Well, he sent an email, and I just got on the Internet, slowly but surely. He, I think I printed his report, too, in case I was going to have an issue. Let me look for that. Look at this. Continue the Internet. But, yeah, I'm not seeing it. Did he send it to you or to us? Too? Well, I emailed him before all of our meetings, you know, just to see, like, if he has anything to add. Okay, here we go. Um, I asked him about if he could share an update of applications. He said um, they have 48 new, 252 total, and 371 who have not um, applied that used to, that always applied in the past. 48 new. So 48 new, 252 total, 252 and total. 371 that typically apply that have not, and that was as of March 29th today. Ooh, that sounds really low. So. Um, and what are they doing? Are they reaching out to these 371, or what's? Or is that not quite the question? I assume, that's, that's, I assume they do that, but <clears throat> I don't know for sure. Um, he did say um, that he was interested in doing a mailing and has money in his budget. Oh. He says he has at least $1,000, but he didn't know if he had any more. That that company keeps emailing me. Oh, InfoUSA? Yeah. So he said that he used, I'm not sure what it is, but he took everyone that doesn't get the newsletter from Brenda and doesn't get another mailing that he's aware of, and it ended up being 1,400 people okay. are not hearing about the program directly. Wait, how did you get to that? Well, he took what people that weren't getting that were getting Brenda's newsletter, and he subtracted them out somehow because oh. he feels like they were getting some information. And then he had some other software, but he didn't mention what it was called. 
to see if they maybe like are already in contact or get a mail reminder. But he said that leaves 1,400 people that could qualify that are 60, 65 and older um, or disabled that are not getting a formal um, information, whether they just don't haven't provided an email and they, he has addresses. So he said that he would be willing to just send the, the two-page grid on how you qualify that he has available in his office. And then together, if we would do a cover letter with him, he could get envelopes with a window and mail it to this group. He said that it, um, the software that he uses talk, gets everyone over 65 who's a homeowner with income less than 100000 so he has a list of this? He said he has. A, he can get this list of only addresses, not emails, but addresses. And that it would require um, him to get a... And he already has this list? Yes. He has a list. So I'm not sure. I asked him if it's something that he feels like he needs help folding or something like that, because he seems to say that it's just a matter of printing a letter with these names and addresses and getting window envelopes and post-its. And this is all over 65 and disabled people making? He just said it was 65 and older homeowners with income less than 100000 Yeah. So it might, might not be capturing the So not disabled? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't say it was. With incomes under 100000 mm -hmm. So. The two people that run that disability commission, Alder Crocker and Dan Van Horn, maybe they could get us a list of people that could be mailed for disability reasons since they're on the disability commission. Mm -hmm. So um, we got their names from Julie last meeting. Do you want to call them, Jill? Sure. So it's Alder Crocker. Okay. A L D E R Crocker. And Dan Van Horn, who's the Trinity Baptist Church. Minister. Oh, okay. So Alder Crocker, she said, was the president, and the VP was Dan Van Horn, the Trinity Baptist Church uh, minister. Okay. And they meet um, every other month, and they would be the ones that were in that group that we missed on March 8th that was postponed to the 14th, and now they won't have a meeting again until May. So we want to talk to them prior to get a list of who might benefit from the program. Maybe they can't give us a list, but maybe they could pass it along. Or figure out a way to. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's some kind of HIPAA thing where they can't give a list. Just, you know, I'm not sure. So um, I guess my next step is the, I would go into Ross's office myself tomorrow and or Friday and just see if what his budget is. Does he have this list of names and addresses? And what does he need our help with? Because if his group is busy and he just needs us to like, does, does, does the town even have a folding machine and a stuffing machine? Probably not, right? We haven't we haven't approved anything like that, have we, in many years? I don't know. So does he need physical help? And, um, yeah, I'll find out if he needs physical help. And he wanted a cover letter? Yeah, he says he wants a cover letter, but I think he said he would format it so that it fits in this envelope that he has with a window so that we didn't have to like get labels. But he wants a cover letter. He might want our input on the cover letter. And he was just going to send that two-page grid on how you qualify, the one that he has in his office. I don't have it with me. Um, he'll so send that. I don't know if he'll send it, but he, he says he has $1,000 plus. Dollars, so I can't imagine it would be more than that to print 1,400 letters. That sounds like a good amount. Yeah. yeah. How much is a stamp today? Well, and, and, and what other questions you have for him? Does he need physical help? And what else cents. do you want? What, uh, oh, that's it. Like, does he have enough money in his budget? And does he have? Does he need physical help from us? Fifteen hundred. And does he need us to help edit the cover letter? Seven hundred thousand envelopes. Fourteen hundred envelopes. I don't know what they cost. He said he has the envelopes. And paper. Sure, he has the envelopes. Has the envelopes. So has the address. Paper though, so. yeah. I mean, I'll give he him three have, reams of paper. He should have them. Care. Um, to do that, 1,400 people. Yeah. And he feels like with 47 days left, this like time is of the essence. Of course it is, right? Well, if you got, yeah. Um, so. Was he worried about the number of people who have applied so He didn't far? say. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, 
I'm, 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 I'm very happy that he's he's excited about and interested in doing a mailing. I've yeah, that's great. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. The the Elder Crocker and Dan Van Horn. Do we know for sure that they wouldn't help with addresses that could? We don't know. We don't. So, check so we can them. check. Yeah. Yeah, Jill's gonna check with Alder. So we can say if, he, if they, uh, you know, to, to see if they can help with addresses for Ross. Mm-hmm. They or can if help not, with yeah. Or if not, we could just scan the two-page grid on how the tax relief works, and he, they could forward it on if they have contacts. But Jill's finding that out for us. So that's it for Ross. But Thank you for coming, Ross. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we, we couldn't expect him to mail it at his own expense. Like we'd have to figure. Well, he out. said he had money. Oh, know. you know, you talk about the yeah. The, 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 I don't know. I mean, it's a commission, so maybe there's a budget. And I don't think it's that many people because right now we only have you know okay. 21 participants. Right. So it can't be right. Now. It's not. It's, it's not all that, that many. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay, good. So that's all for that. And then the next thing was, um, if he does need help with the letter, I would imagine that you know it can't be it's, you know a couple sentences. We want you to. I think it has to be a little flashy. I feel like anything that comes out of municipalities is usually just black and white. Here are the facts. But we need something like you know maybe I could help them with something eye catching, a little marketing pizzazz. Sounds good. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if he's willing to. Do that. Okay. Um, next thing is marketing this program over the next 45 days. Um, I, I didn't actually go, as I mentioned, I would to the um, condo associations. Julie mentioned the senior housing, but none of them own their homes. There is a list of senior housing, affordable housing homes that's on our website, but it was like a list of about 15 addresses. And so, those people own those homes? Yeah. Oh. So they qualified for um, for affordable housing, and they own their home. Mm -hmm. So, like my uh, like for example, my sister in law lives in those Greenfield Street ones over by the old Coles near Aldi's. Oh. So those are like homes that she owns, okay, but she doesn't own the property in her case. She only owns the condo. It's like a duplex. Oh. Okay. So she owns half a duplex. Okay. And they have like restrictions on it, like when Crushing you sell the it. Car wash. Yeah. Those. On the corner the duplexes? There? No, not the corner ones. Oh, those are actual ones. those are actual senior housing. Those are senior uh, housing. Or affordable. Where are the other There's like duplexes right off that one going toward um uh, look. Okay. going toward the high school, there's like a set of like ten duplexes. So someone like her, you know, she would she should qualify because we know that those people live in affordable housing. But they don't live in because um, Julie had mentioned like Selva McKinney and those other places. But those people rent; they don't own. They're renting, yeah, oh, yeah. So there's not like a really big list. There's like that. There's there's maybe 15 addresses of um, town affordable housing that people own the house or a portion of the house. But literally, that's going to be like 15 people. Um, I did get the list from economic development. Yeah, but are they 65 and over? We don't know, yeah. So it could be zero. Right. Anything else you think to market the program other than the mailing? I think the mailing is big because that would reach the most people. I think it's huge. It yeah. really helped the last time. I mean, because there's only, what, 9,000 seniors in town, so if we could reach 1,400? Yeah. It's a big group, considering. Well, I think they're going to find out. You're going to find out. We have to find out. What they're doing with the 371 that haven't applied yet. Yeah. I'll ask Ross, because that's got to be... Uh, there was somebody reaching out to them. That's got to be... It's like biannual, yeah. right? Not everybody has to reapply this year. Yeah. You, um, you only came back every year if you had to change your income. But you were, people are told to not come back for two years. Mm -hmm. Right. If, unless there's a change. Um, so how, what, how many are in there right now? Total? total? Yeah. Mm, looks like... 1306. 1306. Oh, wait, wait, summary total. Oh, yeah, that was from last year. So, yeah. Um, oh, my God. Is it even less? Uh, like 1140. Yeah. That was from the year before, 1306. So, we got 1140. We have 
252 applicants, so 204 are people already in it, 48 are new, and then 371 who haven't applied, and then say another, I don't know, 400, 500 or so that are, don't have to apply maybe this year? Four to 500? I mean, that number of new applications is 48. kind of consistent with last year. Last year it was 65. This year it's 48. But that, but the 65 was very low compared to other years, mm -hmm. I thought. Ross emailed me after I saw his last email saying he still has to extract the current participants from that list of 1,400. Oh. Oh, okay. So oh, 1,400 is inclusive. Of the one, yeah. Could, have. Have. Could, Could be. be. Could be. Yeah. yeah. Well, probably are. <laughs> oh. That's okay. Mm, so maybe maybe last will be cheaper. Good. Um, That's okay. It's just a detail. Were you talking about something just before I interrupted about the participants? Oh, I was just saying this. We're trying to figure out how many. You know, there's 371 who haven't applied yet. There's probably four, four to 500 that probably don't have to apply. All right. I don't know what's the number. Two, three, twelve, six, thirteen. And what is it, Joe? 11, so it's like 500, 700 something. So it's like 500 people that don't have to apply this year. That sounds right. You only have to apply every other year. Really? Yeah, okay. But that 371 that haven't applied is good. Looking for it. It's also that the applications don't mean that those people are going to get into the program right. because they're often being disallowed due to excess income and excess assets. Yep. So other than the mailing to the 15 plus um, affordable housing places we know of, I think Julie mentioned like condo associations. So I know we have a lot of condos here in town. So I think that's another place where if he gets this letter, we can just also shoot it to those mm -hmm. associations. That's a good idea. Room, you know, post this in your community mm -hmm. center. Little too little too late, Mark, or what? <laughs> it's a little late. It's a little is. late. I mean, unless you want to make uh, signs that you put up in the uh, main lobbies of these places and let's say, you know, senior time. I mean, I have some time next week if anyone wants to go on a little, today. like, road show for, for, like, an hour or two. the application deadline, so this is what happened last year. You got a little, uh, you know. Easel board with a sign. Hannah, are you willing to take a drive for a couple hours next week? And just, we could do like a, you know, Delma and Louise hit all the condos in town for yeah, like two hours. Check my. I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna just check my patients next week. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of things are closed for Good Friday, but I'm working. But I'm happy to take like a half a day Friday. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's the first. Thing and then you have Passover too. So. Fat no, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, no, it's my Seder. It's my holiday. So how about Monday or Tuesday? Would those work for you? Wednesday night. So yeah. So might Monday maybe um, work? We don't have any RTM Monday. Well, let me know. Tuesday so we, we have. Do Tuesday. Yes. I mean, I might be able to on Monday. Yeah, I just thought it'd be easier like if I pull up and then you just like throw it in the community center and then I'm like. I, it, it's just a bad week because it's before Passover. For yeah, me. Really, I hear you. I'm sorry. It kind of works out. Yeah, it's just because it's good for me doesn't mean it's good for anyone else. Yeah. So. And you're going away, aren't you, to the islands? No, well, not until. Oh, the break, right? Saturday. All right, well. Probably um, be with Kate's passport renewing on Friday. Oh no, that's stressful. A little bit. Did you just not know it was expiring? No, we knew, but we were traveling, and then. Uh, does it have to be good for so many, so much time after you come home too? Like when you go to Europe, how it has to be like three months after you come back. It has to be good for. Really, it does. Like the expiration date and something. Your expiry, well, that's before you even go. Yeah. Oh right. You, they won't let you. Go if it's within three months. Champagne problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so I'll stay here in France. For... Is that where you're going? Are you, no. you're going to the Caymans, you said. 
You don't want to tell me. I think you want to have a friends right now. <laughs> no, I've, I've never even been to France. So I'm going to look up just really quickly um, of, the condos in yeah, town. There's a lot of places in the world. That's not one. The only place you just really, really hang out and do nothing but drink coffee. Where's that? That is the nicest part of Paris. You just do nothing. Nothing but, but sit outside and drink coffee. Drink and coffee and eat croissants. I went into college um, when I was in studying in, in Germany, London. Germany, all you do is sit out and drink beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember they said, Cindy, you plan the trip to Paris. So I got like the cheapest ferry because the channel wasn't built yet. And it was like we were on with like livestock. It was like so bad. Everyone got sick. <laughs> we stayed at like Shea Albert, you know, it was like Albert's house. And it was literally like it probably cost us all like $138 for a <laughs> full weekend in Paris. And we just ate a lot of chocolate, croissants, and took pictures underneath the Eiffel Tower with whatever, you know, guys were selling roses or giving roses for photo ops. I'm going to tell you, I discovered great. this, uh, that's so bad. These chocolate-covered cronuts at the French bakery. Oh, Vincent, oh. Isabel and Vincent? What? I think I've heard of this. Someone cronuts. Someone else told me about these. Well, I, yeah, don't get them. I'm not. They're crafty. Like, yeah, they're uh, addicting. And they're better than a chocolate croissant. <laughs> it's, it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe, but they're, because it's the chocolate's over like crushed croissant shaped like a yeah. donut. And that's here in town, right? That is Bill Vincent? Yeah, is Bill Vincent. Oh that place God. is great. Although I did buy like a bunch of quiche there, and all of them were the wrong flavor. I think the guy was like, this looks like broccoli. It was like artichokes or something. Uh -huh. This looks like could be cheese. No, there was something else in it. <laughs> he was like sniffing them, like oh, trying to make no. it like estimate it, <laughs> I guess. Okay, so I was just going to look up like condos in Fairfield, but I think there's at least like 20 or 30 units. So, I mean, we just mail it. You know what I mean? We don't have to visit them. But I just feel like if we don't say, hey, you know, we're, uh, we'd like you to put this, you know, if they just get it by... Um, and how else can we get it to them? Mailing, I think, is the best way. You do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's maybe efficient. Ross could add them to his list. Yeah. Um, so there were about 30? No, I don't know. I was looking it up, but I had trouble finding it. Um, but there's not 100, right? No. No records match my soul. But these, who are we mailing to, though? Um, who, who are you the, mailing to? The homeowners associate the... the the condo, condo, condo association. association, yeah. We're not emailing to the individual condo owners because we don't. No, of course not. No. Age. no. So, like for example, like if I look up like FHA insured condos in Fairfield, there's only like three, that's five, but that doesn't mean there's not like 25. These are just ones that you could do an FHA loan, but I'm sure there's some kind of.